critical appeal to online bloggers and um, content providers who are from Nigeria but who are in the diaspora. I'm talking about people in the diaspora because we live in a society that guarantees our freedom of speech and we're able to say whatever we feel about what is going on. Our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, unfortunately, don't have that privilege anymore. That right has been taken away from them and it's a question of you speak at your own peril. You cannot criticize the government. You cannot voice out opinions that are contrary to the opinions of anybody in power, be it the governors or the ministers or not to talk about the president, because every one of them, they are very ready now to silence every opposition, especially because the elections are coming. And you, you hear stories about what some governors are doing, locking up people for saying things, either people who say things on Facebook that does not um, glorify the evil they are doing with their with the power they have, or just people, you know, expressing their opinions. They lock them up without charge. They starve them to death. They kill some. They make some to disappear. And that's why we in the diaspora have got this opportunity to speak out without anybody shutting us down. We need to say the right things now. I'm not saying for you to say things that please me or things that I approve of. No. We need to talk about the fact that our country, Nigeria, is in pieces now. The, it's like it's a war situation in Nigeria now. And if we don't let the world know, nobody, the world will not know. The world will not know. We need to call out the evil, the killings, state-sponsored killings going on in Nigeria. Oh, yes. When you cover those crime stories, a man killed his wife, a man um, stabbed the girlfriend to death, and who is sleeping with who. Yes, I know. Those are human angle stories as well. And people are interested in those things. But please, 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 let's talk about the state-sponsored killings going on in our country now. Let's talk about them. The last video I did, I talked about how the Imo state governor, the chief security officer of the state, rather than go after the Fulani headsmen that are kidnapping and slaughtering people like cows, they are going after communities, bombing communities and villages and markets because they are looking for IPOB uh, criminals or IPOB militants, whatever label they've put upon them. I don't mind anybody going after any criminal, but releasing bombs from the sky on markets, on communities, on villages, on residential buildings, that is way, way too, 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 it's too mean. It's so heartless of anybody to do that. And now that has suddenly become the norm. The other day in Enugu state, they released bombs on villages. Villagers were running helter skelter. The bombs killed so many. They said they were trying to locate the IPOB militants in their tent and they were releasing bombs on villages, on communities, on innocent people. Who does that in, in, in a, in a peace, peaceful situation, in a peaceful time? Those are things you hear that happen in, in war situations. So now we can see that the government of Nigeria is at war with its own citizens, with innocent people. They want to tell me, they argue there's no way they can fish out the criminals in communities without bombing the whole communities. Look at what the soldiers are doing. And you see, it's, it's, it's important for us to call them out because they have a commander. They have somebody that instructs them on what to do. So the soldiers in Nigeria have just embarked on, on, on uncontrolled mass kidnapping and killings. And nobody can stop them. The, the, the checkpoints they put up are checkpoints where they, they, they instruct the Fulani headsmen, well armed, to kidnap people. So as you slow down at a checkpoint mounted by the military in southern Nigeria, the moment you slow down, the Fulani headmen come out of the bush, kidnap you and take you into the bush. They shoot at the cars and force them to stop. And they kidnap the occupants in the car. Sometimes they, occupy, they kidnap up to 20 to 30 people in a bus. Or they kidnap individuals driving home. 
and the soldiers will be at these checkpoints and pretend they didn't know what happened. They pretend they didn't hear the gunshots. They pretend they didn't see that they entered the bush close to them. What stops them from using helicopters to fish these people out from the bushes? They don't want to do that because they are all, it, they're, they're all part of the game. They're all part of the game. The government has sent them to protect the invading Fulani forces that must graze as headsmen to come and slaughter their way through the communities. We used to hear that it was the Fulani headsmen that, that, would, bomb, that would burn villages because according to the president of Nigeria, it's farmers and herders clashes. They will burn villages and burn people in their sleep just because they want to take over the farmlands. And the gov Nigerian government says it's all right for them to do it. That is just farmers' herders clashes. Now, it's no longer the Fulani headsmen that are burning homes and killing, slaughtering people in their thousands. It is now the Nigerian military that are doing it from the air, bombing villages from the air. And when they finish bombing, what happens? The Fulani headsmen take over. They are free to take over the, the farmlands where they've planted their corn, their cassava. They put their cows into, in, into the farms and the cows eat as much as they can and destroy people's farmlands. Even farm settlements. State government sponsored farm settlements are not spared. In this urge of mass slaughtering, this urge of taking over the land by force. Please, my dear bloggers, in diaspora. Let's highlight this state-sponsored evil going on in Nigeria. Let's highlight them. They're going on every day. Even if you don't want to talk about the ones going on in Southeast, what's about the ones going on in Benue State? Benue State, there's slaughter going on there. At least up to 30 people are killed in Benue State on a daily basis by this Fulani headsman. And the soldiers protect the Fulani headsman. Have you ever heard that they arrested this Fulani headsman for killing, for mass rape, for burning houses? They don't, but you hear them glorify, oh, we arrested the IPOP militants. We did this, we killed them. They showed them off. Where are the Fulani headsmen that are terrorizing the whole country? How come they've never arrested them? How come they don't go after them in their camps? The Okiwe Road, the Enugu Express Road is, is their territory. Nobody goes past there without going through one form of uh, um, um, terror or the other. They've taken over with their cattle. They've taken over. And that's why they do most of their kidnappings and mass rape and slaughter. Killings this is a killing field. And the Nigerian soldiers, they mount checkpoints there just to protect these headsmen. Remember the story I told you that the villagers in, 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 in Numunochi came out and said, we want to cut down this forest where these headsmen are hiding and taking their kidnapped vi victims to, where they have killed so many people, the whole place is smelling of decomposing human bodies. They say, we want to, the, the villagers say, I think the best thing is for us to cut down the forest. Soldiers, Nigerian soldiers from Enugu Division, 82 Division in Enugu, they came and said, if you cut anything, we kill you. What is the business of soldiers? What business of Nigerian soldiers got with people who want to um, cut down the forest in their villages? What's the business of Nigerian soldiers? They just cut their guns and say, if you enter the forest for anything, we shoot you, shoot you. We kill all of you. And the villagers could not do that. And that place has remained a place where these Fulani headsmen hide with the kidnapped victims and ask for 100 million naira, 200 million naira. The Nigerian government, know, they know everything. The government knows everything about what is going on. They are the ones sponsoring these killers. And then, let me tell you the latest. The Katina, in Katina State, Buhari's home state, they have the... Um, 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 what do you call them now? Mil vigilantes that they have appointed to take care of the security of the state. The police have failed. The military have failed them. They have now have they now have their own government sponsored vigilantes, armed, fully armed to the teeth, because the Buhari government has decided to use Nigerian soldiers, the Boko Haram people, incorporated into the Nigerian army to to destabilize southern Nigeria. So they don't have enough people to guard them in the north. So he has started, they, they set up these vigilantes and they've armed them to the teeth to protect the people of Kassina State. 
other state governors are saying, like on those state governors are saying, allow me to arm Amoteko as well. Allow me say no. They are not allowed to give them AK-47. The Amoteko security outfit that was formed by the Ondo state government, that they are not allowed to have sophisticated weapons. But the vigilantes in Casino State are allowed to have sophisticated weapons because they know that the people, the bandits, the terrorists are, are well armed as well. And these bandits and terrorists and Fulani headsmen combined are terrorizing southern Nigeria. And the president, Muhammad Buhari, says the governors don't have any right to arm their own vigilantes, just like he has armed the vigilantes in his own home state, Casino State. We hear the governor of Benue State every day crying, crying. They are slaughtering my people in hundreds of thousands. The president should allow me to buy AK-47 for my own vigilante people to take care of the security of the state. Since the police and the soldiers have failed, the militia have failed. Buhari has refused. He spoke the other time through the, the, the chief of um, Irabo. Is he the chief of defense staff or the spokesperson for the army? He said, he said to Autumn, you cannot... You cannot ask for something you don't have a right to have. So Governor Autumn cannot arm his own state security outfit to guard the state. But Buhari's own state, Casino State, they can arm them to the teeth to guard Casino State. What is going on? What is going on? How can people be this bloodthirsty? And we are keeping quiet. My brothers and sisters in the diaspora, please. Let's, let's not keep quiet. Let's highlight these state sponsor killings going on in Nigeria. Let's highlight. That's the only way they can stop because the, 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 the press in Nigeria have been caged. They can't talk about these things. They can't. They've been warned, not even called bandits, terrorists. They are bandits. People who are terrorizing the country shouldn't be called terrorists, that they are just bandits. Who, who, which government does that? Which government pampers, pampers and protects killers? Which government does that? What is going on, my brothers and sisters? <laughs> it's terrible. We're talking about elections. Elections may not hold. The other day, a woman was screaming. We see people screaming that the helicopters were dropping strangers on the hills in Enugu. Dropping strangers. How can you be dropping strangers in the hills? Hundreds of young men being dropped because these are people to cause the chaos when elections start. These are the government-sponsored killers that will that, that have been, that been that well briefed well armed well trained to cause chaos and war and slaughter and the the nigerian media cannot cover it everybody is hiding we in the diaspora need to help now we need to because we see what is going on in iran at least they have been highlighted the world is being made to see what's going on in iran let's get the world to see what's going on in nigeria please my brothers and sisters it's too much. The killings are too many. The mass rape is too much. Chasing people out of their farmland in southern Nigeria. People are starving to death. A friend of mine came back to Nigeria. She said to me, my sister, the people are desperate. Nigerians are desperate. There's so much hunger in the land. The president, Muhammad Buhari, started by sending these terrorists from outside Nigeria, the, these guys as headsmen, to Chase people away from their farms. Slaughter people in their farms. Benue state people, they can't go to the farm anymore. Benue used to be the food basket of Nigeria. The same thing is happening in southeast and southwest Nigeria. People can't go to the farms. And remember that video of the Hausa woman I posted on my, on, my, on my channel. The woman said to Buhari, why do you want, why are you killing indigenous Nigerians? You to, he told, he said, why are you even killing Southerners, especially Igbos? Why are you killing them? He said, Buhari, you told, you told farmers not to send food to southern Nigeria, that they should take it to outside Nigeria and the Niger, to Niger Republic and so on. He said, but why? Why? So they, he stopped food from coming from the north and south, and then he sent headsmen to chase people away from their farms in southern Nigeria. So people can't go to the farm to farm to, 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 to eat. They can't. The, the cost of food is so high. There's so much starvation in the land. And did you hear what Buhari said the other time? He said, uh, some years back, when I went to the United States of America, uh, Donald Trump was asking me, why are you killing your people? Of course you were killing your people. Trump see, saw through it that you were killing your people. You're the one killing your people, Buhari. You're the one sending these people to do what they're doing. You're the one protecting the headsmen who are killing people. You are the one. You're the one sending your soldiers to march checkpoints in southern Nigeria to protect them when they kidnap people so that the villagers will not rise up and, 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 and mob them. Yes, the villagers who could, 
could rise up to lynch these people, but you don't want that. That's why you send soldiers. Your Boko Haram militants are listed in the army. You send them to protect the headsmen and to, to, to make sure they, 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 they kill all the IPOP militants that are able to resist. They were the ones resisting this full army headsmen. Instead, you label them with all kinds of names, and they are the ones that deserve to die. But the Fulani headsmen that are slaughtering and raping women don't deserve to die. We can, we can, River State cannot even protect River State women. They were protesting the other day and saying they were being raped in the farms. And of course, they won't go to the farm as well. We is busy now fighting for his political life. He wanted to be president of Nigeria. We can send killer soldiers to Obibo in River State to go and kill all the innocent people there. There was this case of of, of a single mother, a woman and her daughter. I slaughtered the woman as she was sleeping because she identifies with indigenous people of Biafra. Now, Wick has finished satisfying his full and masters. He thought they would make him presidential candidate of the PDP. Of course, they gave it to Atiku, another full and man that will continue with the full agenda. My people, it's too much. It's too much. I'm sorry that I'm talking so fast. There's so much to say. There's so much to say. But please, I implore you, my brothers and sisters, let's highlight the wickedness going on so that they can be shamed. They can suffer international disgrace. All these wicked leaders in Nigeria, let them suffer international disgrace. Atiku is coming as a Fulani man to continue with the Fulanization agenda. Oh, they want to put um, um, APC man, Tinubu. Of course, Tinubu is too old and too frail to do anything. In his heat days, he would have been a good president, but not anymore. But look at the person that is his deputy. In case anything happens to Tinubu, he's a, he's a Boko Haram sympathizer. Some call him the Boko Haram sponsor. He's a Boko Haram man that, the, that is vice presidential candidate for Tinubu. My brothers and sisters, please, let's speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. Let's speak up for our country. It is our country. It is our country. Let's speak up for our country. We must not keep quiet and watch our country totally destroyed by the Fulani oligarchs. They are but few men. But their agenda is devilish. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm glad you watched this program to this to this point. And I implore you to please click subscribe on my channel. Subscribe to this channel. It's free. You just click subscribe. And then give me the thumbs up if you like what I'm saying. Thank you so much. God bless you. And God bless Nigeria.